How's it going everybody? In today's video I'm going to be going over effective HP or basically your ability to live long. Uh, in this we're going to be going over damage reduction and basically hit points. So the first things you want to know is uh, the game has a built-in cap of 80% damage reduction. This is to prevent anyone from becoming immortal and things like that. Uh, I think power armor gives you a base of 40% damage reduction just by being in power armor. So with by being in power armor, you only need another 40% in order to reach the cap. Uh, you may ask, how do you get more damage reduction? Uh, there are some perks that give it to you. For example, Suppressor. So how Suppressor works is anytime you shoot a bullet or do anything out of attack, you gain 30% damage reduction for 2 seconds. That's how this works. So in power armor, if you were to be shooting a heavy gun, you would be at 70% damage reduction. Uh, another good thing would be dodgy. At the cost of 30 action points per hit, you'll avoid 30%. So this is another good one, so where you get 70% damage reduction. If you have them both on, you'll get the full 80%. Now say you don't like being a Tin Man and you don't like being in a big lunk of power armor. That's perfectly fine, because with these two perks alone, you'll get 30, and then you'll also get another 30, which is 60% damage reduction. Uh, there's going to be a perk called Lone Wanderer. Uh, do I even have it? Let's see. I'll just find it for you guys real quick. So, the thing with that is, there's a perk called Lone Wanderer. Uh, basically, it says when adventuring alone, you take 10% less damage and you gain AP Gen. Uh, this perk card doesn't work. It does not give you the less damage reduction. So, completely ignore that. So basically, if you aren't in power armor, the only way you are going to get cap damage reduction is by popping a drug called Medex. Let's see if I have one of those to show you guys. So basically, Medex will grant you 25% damage resist for 5 minutes, and this will put you at the 85% damage resistance, which is over 80, which will give you max damage resistance. So you may be asking, okay, well that's a damage reduction, what about your armor ratings? Uh, to be honest, armor ratings don't matter that much after a certain percent. Um, so basically how armor ratings work, it takes like a percentile of the incoming damage away. And it doesn't work with um, the damage reduction cap. So at like 140, 140, and this is just me using a typical stealth suit, you are pretty good on armor. You don't need much more than that. Anything more than like 150 is pretty much overkill and you'll suffer from diminishing returns. You could have 900 ballistic resistance, 900 energy using Brotherhood of Steel, like combat armor or whatever, and you will be taking far more damage than somebody with just basic power armor, despite having twice the resistances. Uh, so basically that's how it works. You don't really want to worry about these. You want to focus more on the perk cards. Uh, ways to increase your effective survivability as well is Ricochet. It says 18% chance to deflect damage back to some enemies. Uh, that's basically an 18% chance not to take any damage at all. That's pretty OP. And if you have a vampire's weapon, it actually heals you whenever somebody shoots you. Because the reflective bullets count as your damage to them, so it actually heals you when you take damage. Uh, with that, there's like other things that you could also add, like if you are running a bloody build, you can run Serpentipity. Serpentipity will just give you a flat 30% chance to over damage, so 30%, 18%, 48% chance just not to take damage. And then, if you do take damage, it gets reduced by 60% by having these two perks. You may notice even with these perk cards, you'll still die often. And that's because even with damage reduction, if your health is very bad, you're going to die. So if you look at your health, just go to your stats, uh, you'll probably notice that your health is low. Adrenal reaction uh, that a lot of uh, bloodied users use takes a huge toll on their max health. You'll probably find yourself sitting at uh, probably like 30 or 40 health. Even with 80% damage reduction, like the minimal, like you'll hit, you'll get hit for five and in eight shots you're dead. So if you're running bloodied, consider investing in two a bit of endurance. For me, Life Giver will give you 45 maximum health, which is absolutely huge. Another thing to consider is running Class Freak, so your Adrenal Reaction doesn't hit you with such a hard penalty. With that, if you have about 300 health, like for me, when I'm in 20%, I have about 50, 60 health, which allows me to survive like a lot, lot more damage. 
So basically going over that effective HP and how you want to do it, long story short, uh, you want to make sure you have a decent health pool. Even if you're running bloodied, it's percentile, 20% of your HP. There are food buffs you could take, you could dump points into endurance. Uh, there, there's so much you can do just to buff your endurance up. Uh, other thing is class freak, just mind you of your negative effects that you are getting from being a bloodied build. And then dodgy, sure, it takes some action points, but uh, honestly, it doesn't really impact you that much because you'll be killing things way faster. And suppressor, it says it reduces the target's damage output, but it just gives you flat damage reduction. So with all this, you guys should be surviving a lot more in the uh, the wasteland. And if you guys like this video, feel free to leave a like. And trust me, you will be tanking and surviving a lot of things. Like I've killed like the imposter sheep squatch on my bloody character using those perks because. Literally 80% damage reduction is actually crazy. So if you guys have any questions, drop in the comments. Want to see more videos, consider subscribing. Love you guys and have a super duper day. Bye.